Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Confessions of an IT Business Owner. We're so excited that you're here with us again today. I'm Taylor, back again with Ryan Goodman, president of Connect Booster. We have an exciting episode today. Yeah. We, uh, we're changing it up a little bit on our topic, and I think yeah. a lot of people will appreciate this and find it really insightful. So today we have Troy Gelski. He mm-hmm. is the director of client services at VAR Staffing. Yeah. And we dive into everything. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is uh, dealing with employment issues. I mean, the recruiting process and getting talent and the shortages in talent in our space. Absolutely. We also talk about the hiring process and how that's changed. Mm It's kind of quickened up a little bit and also networking. But the best part was kind of those tangible, actionable yeah. advice that he gave us. Yeah, uh, he, he talked about uh, really diving into your local market, how to deal with local colleges to recruit talent. So make sure you're paying attention to that. And he also talked about a strategy called the golden ticket. Yes. So make sure you keep your eyes and ears open for that near the end of the podcast. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining. We hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Troy, thanks for being on the show, man. Ryan, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. You know, we seem to take up people's Fridays. I know it's morning. A lot of times you do this in the afternoon, so really appreciate you being on the end of the week here. Hey, man. Any any day to get on a talk, uh, talk shop is a great day for me. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm going to start right off. I, you know, we were able to chat a little bit uh, uh, pre-show, pre-recording, and you were talking about some of the uh, the travels that you had, but you have been on a... Was it a 5,000 mile road trip? You want the exact number? 5,150 miles from door 5, to door. 5,150. Yeah, if you're a Van Halen fan, that's kind of, hey, that's cool. Um, <laughs> every year we do a family vacation. Uh, mo- every other year we usually do a road trip. So this happened okay. to coincide. It was kind of touchy because we did uh, a really big national and state park tour. So with Corona and, and things of being redu- reduced, the uh, kind of availability with hotels yeah. and stays. So yeah. I'm in Dallas, Texas, or just one of the suburbs just north of Dallas, Allen specifically. If you guys know Kyler Murray, the football player, that's where he yeah. went to high school. So awesome. Uh, we, we've got a big powerhouse here, great city. But we drove out of Dallas um, and we traveled 10 days. Wow. 11 states, 5,150 miles. We did four national parks, uh, seven local state parks, and you can name it, a, a ton of amazing food stops. We probably averaged about eight to 10,000 steps a day while we were still in the car driving about 500 wow. miles a day. So yeah. yeah, a lot of hiking. So I, I have to ask this question, and maybe it's not appropriate, but I mean, are all the family members still uh, getting along? Everyone uh, still want to talk to each other after a road trip that long? Oh, my, I've got one daughter, she's 10, and I barely even knew she was in the back seat of the car the whole time because she's kids these days, right? They have things to be able to keep themselves entertained. Yeah. So if a car has Wi-Fi and you've got your tablet, your phone, uh, your gaming computer, your Nintendo Switch, uh, a big bucket of Costco snacks. <laughs> I, I left her back there literally like two days, I think, and she asked to go to the bathroom like one time. So <laughs> That's it was great. We love each other. Um, the only thing I asked is she vacuumed the back seat after she got done because can only imagine almost two weeks in a car with a 10 year old and Cheetos and Doritos. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty fair trade because I think, you know, you and I, if, if your childhood was anything like mine, uh, all we had was, uh, well, there were no seat belts, middle of the van seat taken out and matchbox cars and, and, and be quiet. And roll down the window, right? Yeah. We used to throw yeah. our army men out on dental floss and kind of dangle yes. them from the back of the station wagon window. Yeah, I'm in my mid 40s, so I had to find ways of keeping myself entertained rather than walking over to the front seat, pushing the eight track stereo button to whatever <laughs> radio station I wanted. Now you've got a kid that has Spotify and their headphones yeah, exactly. are plugged in. And we had our own adult conversations on front, and she barely even heard what we were talking about anyway. So pretty cool. It was nice. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, that's it was awesome. exhausting. Of course, yeah. they say, right, you want to take a vacation after the vacation. Right. Uh, I had two days to relax and just sit in my hammock in the backyard and just unwind. So good uh, That's cool. Well, good for you to get out there and, and uh, you know, have some, have some fun with the fam. Absolutely. Um, so uh, another funny question. You know, what, what's one thing that, that people don't know about you but maybe would think is quite cool? 
Um, let's see. Uh, I'm a foodie. Um, okay. I think most people know that, but I just started getting into uh, barbecue competitions. So, oh, nice. Uh, a few years ago, I kind of got the bug to get into smoking, not grilling. There's a big difference, by the way, right. uh, between grilling and smoking. Uh, so some people will ask me, and I'm like, oh, you got to be professional about how you answer. But um, So I do that. Uh, I look forward to that. Um, um, let's see. Another thing that people don't know about me. I like eating. Uh, I won a professional eating contest at one point in my life. Um, okay. I'm not Joey Chestnut or Kobayashi. I didn't do yeah. hot dogs, but I did consume uh, 48 bananas in five minutes when I was 13 years old, and I oh beat it. I beat everybody, young and old, you know, tall and small, <laughs> you know, skinny and large. It was kind of like Stand By Me. Uh, except I didn't have to do all that, you know, the other stuff that went along with that movie. <laughs> did you throw up after? I did not. I was actually I told this. If there's one food you could eat and have to gorge on, bananas is the best because it's a, it helps with digestion anyways. And it's, it's, it turns into mush pretty quick. So it's not going to hurt either way. <laughs> You guys didn't know the type of education you were going to get today on this podcast. You're getting did great you? education. Is, we're going to talk about great. MSPs, yeah. staffing, health related <laughs> topics, yeah. road trips, everything. If you're going to overeat, stick with the bananas. Stick with the bananas. Don't do the chili peppers. Don't do the spicy wings at Buffalo yeah, Wild it's... Wings or the local wing restaurant. Try to get your name on the wall. It'll hurt for three days, trust me. <laughs> I'm going to leave all that right there <laughs> cutting it off Cut. <laughs> so uh let's get down to brass tacks here sure. um describe var staffing you know what what types of services do you guys provide for the msp community okay perfect i it's pretty easy um there's a big difference between what we do with say staffing and fulfillment versus recruiting uh, okay. Bar staffing in, in most cases, and some people just think, you know, staffing is all under one umbrella. Um, there's a lot of placement firms that do this all day, a Robert Half, a K-Force. We sure. are, uh, in the, the easiest sense, we are a contingency-based, a, a fee-based search recruitment headhunter. Uh, so partners will come to us and they'll say, I have, I, I need a, a technical account manager specifically in this location or remote. Uh, and we help them out. Uh, our searches are typically an engagement process that lasts anywhere from you know two to four weeks, typically. Um, and it's uh, it's a pretty easy process. We help uh, folks augment either their internal HR that may be having difficulties, or we are sometimes somebody's one and only true outsourced method of of recruitment because it's getting sure. tougher to find folks these days. Yeah. Um, how would you? I mean, that really leads me into my next question. Um, how would you describe the current state of the IT services workforce right now? Um, I think it's a little overstressed. Um, mm -hmm. There's definitely a, a shortage uh, of labor. Um, and that, I guess you can say on the macro level, right? There, there's always, or there is right now a, a big shortage of labor. Uh, and you can count that to just the amount of job growth, the fact that we have COVID affecting yep. people. There's a lot of people that are still uh, sitting on the benches. Um, mm -hmm. But this specific um, MSP ecosystem has has not always had a, 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 its share of uh, issues with staffing or, or recruiting, but I don't think there's enough people to fill the seats. There's, there's more supply than demand. Hmm. Um, or, or I guess there's more demand than there is supply, but there's yeah. always going to be a, a shortage of, of talent. Um, the good quality folks are dug in. A lot sure. of them are with solid, mature organizations that are being that are compensating them enough to where that they're really not on the market. Uh, a lot of what we see on the marketplace is some of your entry level or some of the junior people that maybe are just kind of your maybe your B plus or your, or your C team, right? The folks that yeah. are expendable more often. So I think that kind of answers some of that question. And then yeah. I think we're going to get into some others that will tell you a little bit more why there's. Yeah. I mean, you know, what, what are some of the, what are some of the factors that you feel are, are causing the shortage? I mean, you know, obviously there's some of that, that macro economic stuff that that's going on, on right now, but you know, even in our, you know, ecosystem, sure. is it, is it, is it now tighter than 
what it is historically yes then it, yeah. it's it's a lot tighter um if you were looking in the if you were wearing the the helmet or or the the, the kind of the the hat of mm -hmm. just staffing in general most of our partners are smb msps that's operate in the smb workspace but if you kind of encapsulate some of the conversations we have with enterprise folks as well there there's not enough there, there's so much growth within organizations right now i think there was a crazy stat that if you took microsoft google and amazon and you added up their net worth and they were larger than the, the those three or four organizations and facebook accounted for whatever it was 95% of the top 100 companies or right, of, of people in the Fortune 500, right, or Fortune 100 companies. Um, MSPs right now are doing such a good job with their growth plans as well. They're, they're capitalizing on attracting some of these smaller businesses that need help, right? So mm -hmm. their, their ticket counts are going up. Yeah. Now, sometimes their headcount is not. So a lot of these folks are working a lot more tickets. You know, if they're doing six a day, versus 10 a day, right? That's a, that's right. a pretty big influx. For Some sure. people are getting burned out. They're moving yeah. over to different organizations. Some folks are going from MSP to enterprise because they mm -hmm. wanna go ahead and reduce that pace. That pace is the difference between, I tell people it's like checkers versus chess. I use that analogy a lot. You can clear a board and hop and skip and jump and you can win. But if you do it from a perspective of playing chess, right, if you watch the Queen's Gambit, you know how cool it is to have that thought process. A lot of MSP owners now realize just being able to maintain is not going to be well enough. A lot of the competition sure. out there when it comes to other MSPs is failing. They're able to pick up some of their books of business. They're also having great things with being able to offer more competitive prices. So. The sure. marketplace is definitely dynamic. The good ones are getting paid or they're get, sometimes getting a little bit overpaid as well to not go anywhere. Or mm -hmm. folks like me have conversations with them, interested yep. enough in a new opportunity. There might be some pain points somewhere and they're willing to tell us what it would take to, to be willing to have another conversation with a new possible uh, suitor. So what positions are you guys seeing that are in most demand today right now on our channel service delivery manager senior engineers on projects as well as help desk technical account managers we're getting a lot of sales account executive roles as well um a vcio yeah that's a majority of it a lot of it is more on the senior uh slash director level as well we do have cto searches cio searches but for the majority, the meat and potatoes is, I would say, service delivery and senior engineer right now. Gotcha. What uh, What are the hardest to fill right now for the, hardest for, for the community? Is really your senior engineers. The those are kind of the purple squirrels of the unicorns right now. And here's hmm. the reason why. You would probably think that a you know a senior level director would be, but they're not. There's more of a you can slow down a little bit when it comes to the timing of interviews when you have a more senior type of role. But when you're dealing with a project engineer or a help desk engineer, they're probably talking to three or four other suitors. Sure. They may have multiple offers and they're really kind of picking uh, what they want. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably get into the question of what we're hearing from candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks are, it, it, it's, a, it's a seller's market, right? And they're selling themselves. Um, the MSPs want them and sometimes they're having to fight and flip coins to see who gets them. Um, we talk about hybrid roles versus fully remote roles. A lot of these yeah. conversations come into play when you're trying to weigh a hundred thousand dollar offer with MSP that's five minutes away from my house that will mm -hmm. make me come on site five days a week, be on the client yeah. site maybe 10% of the time, or I can work fully remote come into the office as I please, be able to have the flexibility to log more hours, have a, you know, maybe a lunch with my wife, things like yeah. that, right? We're working from home. So a lot of these things get into consideration and a lot of candidates are driving the market right now. So we have to be really um, um, flexible when it comes to balancing how quick a business owner like yourself would be able to onboard somebody and have interest to make sure that 
you're not taking too long to drag out the process. And that's something that we talk to a lot of our partners about is explain your actual interviewing and hiring process because we want to understand if we could help maybe have some discussion on streamlining those processes right. to make it look like today's marketplace. Right. Yeah, I would assume in that process there are times where uh, the employers are putting unknown barriers between them and bringing in those candidates and you guys are helping them uh, flush them out through through uh, your consulting yes. process. Yes, it's, um, you know, sometimes you get in there, like, I don't know, know if you've ever watched your kids get a swimming lesson, but, you know, remember that first time you saw your kids, like, getting thrown in the pool and head under the water and they're, you're like, oh my God, are, we have to have discussions with folks sometimes. It's reality, right? It's like I'm like yeah. your doctor and you're the patient and I'm telling you, hey, if we're going to have a positive output here, we're going to have to have these measures in place. Yeah. Your interview process of being three and a half weeks with five interviews is not going to cut it today. Right. Our suggestion would be, you know, this is what a lot of our partners are doing right now, kind of giving them the, the framework of trying to decide is this something. We never want to have somebody like yourself with has a dedicated process that maybe I don't know about. Maybe you and your team have developed the last five years of making your hiring process very unique to where that you set the right expectations up front and then your tenure is great. There's not much churn. Mm -hmm. But if you're realizing that you can't get people to the finish line the same way, then we'll, we'll have to kind of at least kind of hyper converge some of those facets together, streamline yeah. it to rather than having five, you have three and sure. you don't require them to take off two days a week at work, you say, let's meet on a Saturday, right? Show sure. them that you have some flexibility as well. Yeah. Or after hours, that's a pretty popular thing these days. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, flexibility, That's that's been one of those, uh, we've been very used to over these last 18 months or so, uh, uh, getting flexible. Are, are, are you seeing IT professionals now really looking for more of a remote work environment versus, you know, going back into the office? I mean, are you seeing a hard lean one way or we, another where? Yeah, we hear a little bit of both. Um, the good ones, let's, let me step back. Um, we always have the analogy that we like to sometimes eat our own dog food or at least talk to our, 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 our partners and MSP, sure. a majority of what they do is outsource technology, right? It's a managed mm -hmm. service. It's all typically done remote. Sometimes you have to go on on site, right? Pretty rare, but you have to have those touch points. A lot of MSP, successful MSP owners have already, even prior to COVID, dealt with a hybrid type of role. When mm -hmm. COVID kind of came down and everybody, in most cases, had to go fully remote, I do have some business partners that never left the office. They were okay with that. They got yeah. vaccinated. Their clients yeah. had certain policies, but when you went through a hybrid environment, a lot of people were happy with that. It, it caused a lot of unique work-life balance, and most of it was for the better. Some of it was for the worse. Sure. Uh, there are some people who just can't operate with mom you know, or wife and kids at the house. Right. You have newborns and, and yeah. dogs and cats, and we've all seen those funny videos, right? Just sneaking in the background. <laughs> but <laughs> but a, a lot of candidates, what they've been doing is they've been getting some flexibility. So we hear that. Um, we understand that. And sometimes we have certain partners that will align their job requirements for those. There are some people that have certain SLAs. They need the boots on the ground. They have to sure. have that, you know, that specific person on site. Now, what they offer them sometimes is that opportunity, what they're able to provide, what they're not really seeking right now. Some of it is just travel distance, right? Or some of it is, I just got laid off because my organization has crumbled because we've lost, you know, five quality accounts. Right. So the marketplace sometimes will get littered with really quality people, but there's also a lot of white noise that are on the job boards and on LinkedIn and on career builder, because a lot of people just have put their resumes out. And when you yeah. put that you're looking for a server engineer and the the server down at Chili's is applying because they saw the word server and they just hit right. you know submit 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 that happens a lot as well so we try to for our partners uh, let them focus and isolate on the actual passive market and that's where we're most successful is with passive candidates that are not on the job boards sure 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 
Well, and the nice thing is, I mean, one of the big efficiencies of working for you guys as well is you're you're boiling it down. You're getting rid of that white noise before it ever reach an interview level for for your client base. It is completely stripped down. Um, the, the the barriers of conversation that we don't have to face that a normal uh, business owner or HR would it is very um, is very filtered in most yeah. cases. So the fact that we're a you know a third party you know and in most cases um, they've never even heard of the organization that I'm going to talk to them about. So sure. you know my job is you know to learn a lot about the actual individual. Most of the time, since we're a very precise. Uh, I, I like to use the word sniper, right? Extraction mm -hmm. expert, poacher, yeah. whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of names for recruiters, but I have to put person A to company B because there's not the factory. And I want to talk about the factory later if we can get down to what we can do in the future to maybe help out some of the shortage. But we have to rob Paul to pay Peter. And yeah. and Peter wants the best MSP tech, right? They also want him to not hopefully be overpaid. They want him to be a perfect plug and play. So when we are able to already kind of tee up that person, that candidate that doesn't have to already shake out the 15 or 30 minutes of jitters in an interview and they already yeah. know some of these things going in exactly what the role entails, what the compensation reigns is looking like. You don't have to get to the finish line and then get surprised by maybe a low ball offer, which happens sometimes, or there's just a difference in opinion on where the job would be. It, it helps out kind of level the playing field and make things more of a smooth uh, transition and more of a, a white glove treatment is what sure. we try to offer. It's all about an introduction. It's never about a forceful conversation. Mm -hmm. I can't get you to buy somebody, but I can introduce you to them and then you take them through your process. And then if it works out, they're yours, right? So yeah. at the end of the day, you're happy. Hopefully they made an impact uh, and we've got a great business relationship and you can see the strategic use of your time was well used of trying to off, you know, offshore that model to somebody else. Eat, eat the yeah. own dog food. Let somebody else do the heavy lifting, their right. expertise. You guys do the technology. Right. Sometimes recruiting is not your forte. So, mm -hmm. spending six weeks to find somebody has cost somebody, you know, ten grand in in, in, in labor just Absolutely. because of that happening. Yeah. So you had mentioned something there really interesting, and I have a couple other. Um, questions I want to ask, but I want to move into that factory statement, you know, and I think this really lines up with, you know, in an ideal world, you know, how would you guys solve the worker problem for MSPs? It's there. There's been, you know, there's universities and technical schools and, and a lot of things that a, a lot of MSP partners are not utilizing hmm. uh, about 10% of our strategic, um, our, our practice does a lot of consulting as well. So we offer not just a, hey, let us help you recruit, but let's yeah. talk to you about the marketplace. Let's talk to you about outside of your market as well. But one factor that I hear a lot from some really successful partners is they invest time and money um, into partnering with the local universities, and I'm talking even on a community college level, that's great, mm -hmm. because let's be honest, a lot of people that are going to these fancy four-year universities, they're probably not going to get a, an engine, well, they might get an engineering degree, but a lot of them don't mind starting at some of the local places, not maybe a My Computer Careers or an ITT, but they're focusing on the specific technology. They're not going to the, you know, the University of Oklahoma yeah. specifically for engineering of IT. They're probably going to be a, a nurse or, or a teacher sure. or whatever it might be. So mm -hmm. getting granular on where you hunt. Uh, we have one of our partners that does, he's a, um, an assistant professor at the university. Uh, he's up in near New York City, um, mm -hmm. so a, a lot of a lot of his recruiting happens from. They know his organization is you know twenty minutes away down the street, so yeah. he gets those kids that matriculate out. They want a job, and I, that's a great way to say, hey, look, I do this for a living. I this is what I handle. I do networks. I do servers. I do cybersecurity. If you're interested, your degree is in this background. Come see me. There's not a lot of people that do that. They go to maybe some of these trade shows or they go sure. to the universities for uni you know the, the um, career day, but they really need to focus more. They also need to have some of their engineers 
start completing and finishing some of those things that they've always said they wanted to do. They sure. want the job growth, but they're not going out and getting the certification. So yeah. one of my partners told me that he requires X amount of certifications per person based upon a role. He pays for them. And mm -hmm. when they go down the street to the, the local testing facilities and have those classes, that's kind of the mix and mingle. There's 25 or 30 other individuals there doing the same thing. It's a great place to shop, talk, talk about your organization. If one of your directors was in there or, or one of your HR team just getting acclimated, that'd be a great place to kind of meet singles, right? Yeah. So you, you can, if you network the right ways and not just do it via LinkedIn and make a job posting, which is not really going to attract the right ones, if you make an effort in the community, in the marketplace, donate some time, go yeah. ahead and get the food truck down to the homeless shelter or whatever you're doing, your name is going to be put out there. Yeah. And a lot of folks will be able to kind of catch on to that. And that really kind of breeds into the culture as well, because if For you've sure. got the great culture, you've got the tenure, you've got people that are jealous. They say the grass over there seems to be greener. Right. Next time I'm looking for a job, I know those guys down the street. It seems like they've got a pretty solid place. Yeah. I hit up their Facebook page and they've got pictures of them doing escape rooms and paintballs. And it looks like every Friday there's a food truck and they do lunch and learns. A lot of my partners are doing these things. It's more of a social engagement now that you have to. Yeah, no, that's great advice. I mean, not only on, you know, going a level down more granular beyond, you know, your college job fair, like start creating relationships with mm -hmm. faculty and the people that are having more direct influence on, on, you know, these kids and, and the talent, but then, um, you know, that role of culture that goes beyond technical skill set, right. Or what we do at a high level here at our organization, you know, what is it like to be here? You know, what can you expect? Uh, do we make a community impact, you know, beyond, um, dealing with IT environment. You know? And let's be honest, a lot of IT folks are nerdy and quirky and they're introverts, right? They're, sure. they're a little reclusive. Yeah. Not, not, that's not a general, a broad general statement, but an MSP, since it's run a, a lot different than an internal, you know, enterprise IT mm -hmm. system, right? You know, I relate back to my time in the call centers and banking, and I, I worked in a large, a very large organization with 100,000 employees back mm. in the, the early aughts. Um, and I had to deal with getting my computer fixed and updates and things like that. And it was just, uh, hey, man, we'll get to it, you know, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> when you have to change the pace and you're dealing with an MSP that is going from different client to client with a unique individual uh, flavor from ticket from ticket, you right. also have to be able to walk and talk and chew gum. A lot of my partners say, the best people are like people that worked in service industry that were at like waitresses and bartenders that got into IT that can talk and have these conversations. Yeah. They're not fearful of getting on the phone with the CTO at, at the law firm uh, or the head director of IT down at the hospital system that we support because they can do that. A lot of my other guys that work in the NOC, you know, that have kind of been that, you know, quirky Dungeons and Dragons type of yeah, person, yeah. they're not great to have in a pre-sales type of role because sure. they just can't do that. It's kind of, there's a little disconnect there. So. Yeah, different skill set, right? I mean, just Completely different personality different skill type. set. And that's the difference because it's, it's kind of like, you know, the difference between walking and running. You know, you're both in, you're in motion and a lot of people do it differently, but the MSP is going to burn at a, a lot higher horsepower, right? Right. So you, you really kind of burn it. So if you burn out your folks and you don't do it the right way and they get a bad taste in their mouth, sometimes it's the downward spiral of, you know, is it the environment? Was it the culture or was it just, you know, they weren't a fit because they couldn't handle yeah. the tasks, you know, they couldn't do uh, the output that was required. You know, they, they hit, they, they missed the mark on those KPIs. So. Yeah, that's a good analogy, the walk run and just the intensity between, you know, motion is basically the same, but just a different level of, of output that's going to be required. And does that candidate match up, you know, to, to what the environment's going to be? And most people can do their job from home if they don't have the distractions. A, a lot sure. of really successful partners of ours have told us over the last 18 months, what we've realized is we have a great boots on the ground organization. We have, you know, enough capacity that if our clients needed people here, but 
let's start getting some remote workers and let's start maybe being able to cut some labor costs. So mm-hmm. a lot of our conversations when it comes to a strategic level now, when we have to do a little bit of consulting yeah. are, hey, you're in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, right. Do you want to hire somebody in San Francisco, California? And that you would say, no, why would I do that? It's going to cost me a lot. The flip side is I've got folks from San Francisco saying, I take somebody from Fargo, they're probably going to make a lot less, right? At cost of sure. living. And, and those are really um, a lot of key conversations are happening with the availability of now I can be an organization that is on the East Coast and have a West Coast presence. Right. I can do it flip side. I've got a partner in New York City. They have a person in Anchorage, Alaska. Sure. Um, they did that two, a, a little bit before two years ago, actually, just because they were okay with remote. And they were always remote anyways, except mm-hmm. in New York and Long Island. But they said he can kill tickets at 10 p.m. at night, and it's only like yeah. 5 p.m. for him. So yeah. it's great. We could we don't have to wake up in the morning and have that onslaught of all right, everybody, drink your coffee and let's hit get the, the backlog. Now. Yeah, it's backlog. So they already had some of that coverage. Following the sunset helps for some organizations. There's yeah. others that can't do it. There's others that say nope, not 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 part of our our process. The company was founded a certain way. Sure. Everybody has a specific type of, of role. Unfortunately, that's not us. So we well, like to help sense. those. Um, and look, it's it's tough. Most people are coming to us, Ryan, for a reason. They can't find it themselves. So it's it's kind of right. like Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. You know, <laughs> they're calling in the Millennium Falcon, and, and we're Star Please. Wars guys, kind of trying to shoot the blasters here. So we we tee them up, but at the end of the day. We know we're able to identify what they want. Uh, a lot of the hard part is, I don't know the right people. Um, you have to have the right mechanisms in place to do that. So sure. the fact that we've been in the industry, well, we've been doing this specific ecosystem for almost 10 and a half, 11 years. Yeah. Prior to that, we were in more of the staffing business, but mm-hmm. we refocused all of our efforts to be MSP, TSP, that ecosystem dedicated because it's a great niche, right? Uh, it's it's a, it's like walking into your favorite department store and not having to go anywhere else. You realize that you come for there for a good reason because it's cost effective. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, you don't have a big headache from it. Uh, yeah. You don't have to run around town and worry about you know trying to find something else elsewhere. And yeah. a lot of partners just want to make things easy. So I say, kind of eat the eat your dog food, because some it makes sense and others it's like well we do have a little bit of of of, of positive. Uh, to show from doing some recruiting efforts like those level ones and level twos, but we're going to come to you specifically maybe for our newest CTO. And that's sure. going to be something that's pretty hard to do. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Job shift boards gears work. on you a little bit. Yeah. What, job, what was that? Sorry. I the job you. boards work. Um, yeah. and, and let me say that you can definitely do some great things on LinkedIn and dice and career builder and all these things. But and trust me, I listen to Sirius XM and it seems like every other commercial is for one of those job things because they yeah. spend good money. Um, a lot of people realize it's hard. So for a few bucks a month to subscribe, maybe you can get lucky. But yeah. But you've got all that front end work that needs to be done then sure. to get through the uh, the uh, restaurant servers who <laughs> yeah. mistakenly get themselves Absolutely. On, that, on that board. Always be closing, right? No matter where you go, to see if somebody wants a job. Yeah. Hey guys, here with a quick break from our show to remind you to subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening. If you have suggestions for future episodes or you want to be a guest on the podcast, email us at podcast at connectbooster.com or send us a message on Facebook or Twitter and we'll be sure to point you in the right direction. Lastly, to find out more about our guests, check out their information in the podcast description. Thanks for listening to the confessions of an IT business owner. Let's get back to the show. We have some great stories. We should write a book. We really should have a coffee table book. That would be fun because the the amount of uh, conversations we have, our biggest source subject, and one of the things that's kind of grinds my gears is Ooh. you get a, yeah, let's talk about gear grinding. Yeah. If, you, if you're a fan <laughs> of uh, Family Guy, Peter exactly. Griffin does a good grind my gears section. All right, Peter, go. <laughs> counter offer conversations. If okay. you're an employer, don't throw out a counter offer. If somebody wants to leave your organization, have an interview, okay? Mm. Have the exit interview, discuss, find out if there was something that could have happened, you could have had a different tra- trajectory for them. 
putting a counter offer in place is like putting a band-aid on a gunshot wound. Two things are going to happen. You're going to fire that person within the first X amount of months because you realize that their intention is probably not to stay. Sure. You probably can't sleep at night as a business owner knowing that John Smith might be looking for another job and you already sure. know that can of worms is open. The reality is there is a 90% likelihood that that person will be with your organization. They, they would have left your organization within 12 months. There is an 80 82% likelihood that they've left within six months. More than sure. likely, they're, they're not on the side of probably staying. Around. They're not staying. Um, and that also kind of hinders what somebody else has worked hard for the last couple of weeks to kind of show them. It, it's a realization. It's not like I'm trying to switch you and convert you from Judaism to Christianity, right? I'm, we're just talking about a different opportunity. We're not saying that right. your job now is horrible. It's just that maybe there's more benefit there. So. Uh, we had a, a very close personal um, a business partner of ours tell us they've incorporated a golden ticket type of mentality. Have you ever heard of this? Do you know what this is? No. Uh -uh. So if I was leaving your organization, you would say, Troy, I'd hate to let you go. I think you'd be a great asset. I'm not going to keep you here. However, I've got this golden ticket. It's basically a, I'm going to, I'll hire you back. I'm going to give, I'll give you one shot. Here's the deal. It's got a six month deal on there. If you can come, if you need to come back within the first six months, no harm, no foul. We'd love to have you back. Take you on where you left off, you know, or maybe even discuss possibly the reason why you might need a small bump from there, right? At least you set that expectation with them that, hey man, if this isn't the right fit, you're a good person. We want you here. The sure. reason why you do that is it shows good faith. You're not burning the bridge. You've made the actual, you've put your hand out to say, let's, let's maybe, maybe you might be back here. Right. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, if they don't, the bird has left the nest that, you know, you see them flying off into the sunset and they've improved. You feel happy about it. Um, yeah. that was a unique thing to hear. It's now there's strategy. always the catch 22. Did they come back because they, 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 they kind of crashed and burned over there. Did they get there and there was a conflict? You know, what was the reason? So you're going to have to deal with understanding that there is going to be something, a uh, reason or determination why they would come right. back. Hopefully that's not a big rub. Um, I think that's a pretty cool initiative. If more yeah, companies like did that. something like that, it'd be useful. Now there's others that you don't offer that to, right? It's kind of one of those things you put in your, uh, your, your jacket pocket, yeah, kind of play that of card if you had to. If it's yeah. an engineer that you've had problems with, let him go. Yeah. Hey, man, if you want to work out your next two weeks, great. If not, you can call today your last day. Um, most people will typically have enough respect and desire to work out two weeks. Uh, so that's kind of the grinding the gears. If a counter offer is in play with somebody and they accept it, it really is one of these things where it's kind of it torches everybody. It looks makes us look bad. It makes the organization yeah. say, why didn't they accept my offer? Uh, and it really shows that the uh, the company that they're working for, you know, how they operate as well. So that that's something that really shouldn't hinder the process. Um, we always give them a very firm, straight conversation when an offer is presented. Hey, look, you can't get the toothpaste back in the tube once it's mm -hmm. squeezed. Mm -hmm. If you ink this, don't call me, you know, on Sunday night saying I've decided to stay put or I had right. another offer. You know, it's it's kind of like your word. You know, I mean, I get it. It's a piece of paper and most things are at will. But a person in the industry with this type of position shouldn't be doing, you know, ha having themselves in a situation like that. No, that makes sense. Great, 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 tangible, actionable advice wrapped up there. Well, Troy. This was a fun conversation, really right. valuable, a lot of tangible advice. Also appreciate your take on uh, what's going on with talent in, in the Absolutely. industry and the struggles. I'd and, love to and do another. Yeah. We, these also, look, where we, you guys solve, solve these, for that too. These are, these are really good conversations that are on the forefront of a lot of people's organizations right now. Having right. discussions like uh, people like yourself who are in the trenches, you've been in, you've been doing this for what, 20 plus years, right? long time man. it's not getting easier so no. um, being able to help 
uh, having very strategic conversations with partners is, is really key. Um, there's a lot of great, you know, you see people like Tony Robbins uh, and who's the guy, uh, Dave uh, Ramsey, right? Yeah. A lot of these business coaches are out there, but there are a lot more MSP business coaches as well. If you're not part of an organization or a leadership group or, or mm -hmm. part of a, an ecosystem, I would highly encourage everybody out there to join something. It could be as small as Taylor Business, Robin Robbins, yeah. do the Evolve ConnectWise series, whatever yeah. it may be, join something because surrounding yourself with like-minded business individuals that are going through the same processes, you're able to enlighten yourself, you're able to get some of their secrets, you're able to get into some high level discussions that were, is gonna help your business. At the end of the day, I'm one of the vendors out there that people can probably say, they would love to not have to use me, but they have to use services right. like us. So right. being able to have a, a, a kind of a white glove, full-fledged recruiter that has a consulting approach as well is, is something that we really strive to do the best. We're a small organization. We only work, you know, contingently here in the U.S. We've had a lot of partners ask us, come to Canada, come to Australia. I'd love to, but we don't know those marketplaces as well as we yeah. do here. You guys so. are focused where you're focused. Yeah. Troy, those were great final thoughts. I, 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 I was going to try to lead you into like, hey, any final closing statements? I think you nailed it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold that one back because all I'll do is screw this up if we try to, <laughs> if we try to get better than that. Hey, look, it, it's all about improvement and we want to make it easier for people. Even in just your personal life, right? You've got to have a positive aspect. You can't, you can't frown upon things. You can't, you know, live in the past. Things have to Truth. change. The technology and the, eco, the ecosystem that we're in, right? It's always going to change. Cybersecurity mm -hmm. is a huge deal. We have right. to be really focused on things like that. And if we don't talk about it, right? You know, we, we let's go in the rabbit hole of global warming or, or climate sure. change, right? That's huge. It's, we're talking about the same thing here in this ecosystem. There's a big change. There's a there's an eruption. A lot of businesses are really going through hyper growth. They're they're doing so well. They're spinning like a top that they they're trying to uh, gobble up a lot of they can. And, and a lot of the things they're doing right now, Ryan, is a lot of mergers and acquisitions. That's really the oh, only yeah. way that they're able to organically grow and have a larger footprint and some organizations would not want to have to be you know acquired right they want to be able to to have that organic growth and if they can't do it because there's not enough head head count in their area to have five more engineers they got to think outside the box so right we try to make it easier no that's awesome well great it sounds like we probably have a couple other things that we could uh, uh, discuss on a second session here so uh, as uh, as time goes on and trends continue to change, uh, maybe we should uh, sure. get back together and, uh, do, and do another Absolutely. episode. I let's have an open great. forum. Let's get some business owners in. Let's talk about some, yeah, some hot topics idea. around hiring and firing and, and what it is. It's it's a process. It's always going to be a, a cyclical belt. And we yeah, just want to figure how to streamline it. Let's make it look like an Amazon warehouse if we could, right? Where it's yeah. just yeah, yeah. automated. But I don't think automation could fix some of these issues. Sure, sure, sure. So. Well, sounds like we just created ourselves a project, man. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, thanks again for jumping on on a Friday. Appreciate all the insights and advice and looking forward to talking to you again soon. Awesome. Catch you soon, man.